let's learn about how to interpret confidence intervals. Let's play a game of ring toss. Here is our target. Sometimes I capture the target. And sometimes I miss the target. I design a robot to play ring toss. The robot takes in a lot of data, including the wind speed and direction, and uses that data to try to hit the target. Sometimes it succeeds. And sometimes it fails. I am so confident in my robot that I offer a performance guarantee. It will capture the target 95% of the time. In statistics, perhaps I want to know the average height in the U.S. I can never know this number because I can't measure every single person. I talked to God while making this video, though, and he told me the answer is 66 inches. That's the average height in the United States. But let's pretend that we don't know this. How can I estimate the true average height? Well, I can take a sample of data, and that is probably pretty close to the true average height. It won't be exactly correct, though, so our estimate has a margin of error. So I designed a robot to take in data and guess a range of values that I think are likely. If I see that the average height of five people is 63 inches, I might think that the average height is probably 63 inches, give or take two inches. And I make an interval. This time, my robot failed at capturing the true average of 66. After taking another sample, the average height of these other five people was 65 inches. The robot thinks the average height in the US is probably about 65 inches, give or take two inches. This time, the robot succeeded at capturing the true average of 66. And I am so confident in my robot that I offer a performance guarantee. This robot will capture the target 95% of the time. This is what a confidence interval does. It succeeds at capturing the true value a guaranteed percentage of the time, commonly 95%. It is never about the single interval. I am 100% sure that this interval contains the target. And I am 100% sure that this interval does not contain the target. But both intervals were produced by a robot with a 95% performance guarantee, and that makes them 95% confidence intervals. In the long run, about 95% of the intervals will capture the target, and 5% will miss the target. In the long run, about 95% of the intervals will capture the true average height of 66 inches, and 5% will miss the target. In statistics, we want to capture the true value of a parameter which describes the population. We might want to estimate mu, the average height, p, the proportion of people who support a political candidate. We do this by estimating these quantities with data. We estimate x bar, the average height in the sample, or p hat, the proportion of people in the sample who support the political candidate. And these are called point estimates. They're our single best guess of the parameter. However, the point estimate will never be exactly correct because it's based on random data. A confidence interval is a range of values that surrounds the point estimate and is likely to contain the true value of the parameter. Instead of having a magic robot that creates confidence intervals, we often have a mathematical formula like the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. Here's the formula to make a confidence interval for a mean. And here's the formula to make a confidence interval for a proportion. That's the end. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.